Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. I wanted to do a video on the possible benefits and the possible downsides of installing macOS High Sierra Beta. I did this in my old 2010 17-inch MacBook Pro. It was high spec at the time with a Core i7 processor and I've maxed it out with 8 gigs of RAM and I also installed a 1TB Samsung SSD. This is actually my second attempt as the first attempt completely destroyed my Windows Bootcamp partition, which I'll come back to later. But that leads me to... Yes, it's a beta. I'm lucky enough to have a spare Mac that I can try this on, so I was prepared for things to break. Before installing the beta, I ran a few performance tests, including boot times. Despite being eight years old, this MacBook was still booting to the login screen within 30 seconds. Installing High Sierra was a very straightforward process. I'm not going to go into detail here, there are plenty of videos on YouTube to walk you through that, but once you have enrolled your Mac and installed the Feedback Assistant, you are then taken to the beta download page in the App Store, and the download itself only took around 10 minutes. I then left the time-lapse recording during the install process and actually left the house, so I think it took around an hour to complete. As I mentioned before, I had installed what was Beta 2 on this MacBook and I intended on doing a video on that, but the performance of macOS was so poor and because it completely broke the Windows Bootcamp partition, I wiped the SSD, did a clean install of Sierra and a fresh Bootcamp partition. The setup process is as straightforward as it usually is for any new version of macOS. But one thing to be aware of, High Sierra does give you a warning that optimization is taking place. You can see here that there are background tasks running, taking up CPU load. As I understand it, this is scanning faces in the Photos app. So I left this running overnight until all the tasks had been completed to make sure this didn't affect any of the results. First up is the boot test. I'll have to admit I had high hopes that the Apple file system was going to improve overall performance but it was a huge disappointment to see that my boot times had actually more than doubled to around 1 minute 10. Next up is Geekbench. With Sierra I was getting a single core score of around 2200 and multi-core score around 4700. I had a slight drop in scores with High Sierra but after a few more test repetitions it had recovered back to the 2200 and 4700 mark. You can also see here some of my Bootcamp Windows scores and interestingly, Windows regularly scores around 100 higher on single core but around 150 less on multi core. Now a very brief mention of Cinebench as it's not hugely relevant but I was getting around 15.5 frames per second on Sierra and I've seen a minute increase to 15.75 with High Sierra. More interestingly, Windows on the same MacBook scores around 16.8 frames per second, so the NVIDIA drivers on Windows must be more up to date than those on macOS. I thought if High Sierra was going to improve anything it would be in the read and write speeds to the SSD. You can see here on Sierra I was getting speeds of around 252 megabytes per second and read speeds were reaching around 267. Looking at High Sierra, I was averaging around 253 on the right, and again around 267 for the read speeds, so no noticeable difference there. One result I found really interesting was comparing the write and read speeds on Windows, around 198 and just over 200 respectively, so there appears to be some truth in the optimization of hardware within macOS. However, when I tested booting directly into Windows, it is now averaging around 32 seconds and, annoyingly, faster than booting to macOS by around 30 seconds on the same machine. So, Windows still works on this latest beta, but there is a problem. If you try to restart to macOS using the bootcamp option from the notification area, Windows can no longer see the macOS boot volume. I wish I'd taken a grab of the bootcamp control panel on Windows to show a before and after here, but you can take my word for it that macOS used to be an option here. Fortunately, you can still select the boot volume by holding down Option during startup, but it's something to consider before installing High Sierra, and I suspect that even if Apple fix this in the full release that's coming very soon, that it will not repair this broken functionality. So, to sum up, 
boot times have increased from 30 seconds to 1 minute 10, no discernible performance improvements on some basic benchmarks, and some bootcamp functionality has been damaged. Here's hoping the full release, and maybe on a more modern Mac, will turn out slightly better. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and if you disagree, you know what to do. See you in the next video.